Philip City volunteers organize a reopening ceremony for the Menga Yong Elementary School in the Philippines. City volunteers hand out emergency cash to 327 families affected by flood in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Helen Liao. Thank you for joining us. In February of 2012, Typhoon Bofa made landfall in the Philippines, devastating many areas, including Compostela Valley of Mindanao Island. Among the buildings damaged was Magayong Elementary School. Knowing how important education is, City stepped in to help Magayong Elementary rebuild. Now, two years since the typhoon swept through the area, the school is finally complete. We now join the City volunteers for the reopening of the school grounds. Students line up along the road to welcome City volunteers. The students haven't seen such a beautiful campus since Typhoon Bofa destroyed their school in 2012. The Mangonyong Elementary School, located in Compostela Valley, was rebuilt by the Tsiji Foundation. On the grand reopening of the school, volunteers explained Tsiji's initial aspiration to attending government officials, parents and students. We will not spend a single cent unnecessarily, but for things that are necessary, every single cent we will spend for that. We will not use the money as a standard. Planting a tree to symbolize hope. There's nothing but gratitude in everyone's heart. This is a gift from heaven. This is a gift from Master Cheng Yen. I think there is nothing that can express how I feel, except thank you. I have nothing but the deepest gratitude for the Tsiji Foundation. You have such passion to help the less fortunate. Dancing along with the music. The students can't hide their excitement either. Typhoon Bufa destroyed our school. I'm happy to see it rebuilt as new. Thank you, Tsuji Foundation. I am so happy that Tsuji built the school for our children. The school is not only for students to use, but was also built to serve as an emergency shelter to safeguard local residents' lives in times of disaster. Teachers from Malaysia's Tsuji Teachers Association, in partnership with the Tsuji Philippines chapter, have been busy handing out Jing Si aphorisms to children in the hard hit area of Lake Province. On one of their most recent visits, they received a special surprise. Let's take a look. Here in Leyte's Channel 1, the blue skies and calm waters make it hard to imagine the tragedy that occurred here a year ago. When Typhoon Haiyang hit, San Roque Elementary School, which sits near the beach, was completely leveled. One year on and children are still having class in makeshift buildings. Visiting today are Tsuji volunteers and a former teacher from Malaysia who left her teaching job two years ago. I quit two years ago and never went back. This time with the opportunity to come to the Philippines has made me think back to my time as a teacher. Activities are first held to help children forget their heartache. Next, teachers hand out volumes of Jingsi aphorisms to each of the children. One of the students decided to reciprocate with a gift, a shirt that was given to her father by her father's boss and has been something of a family heirloom. I was really surprised as her family is not well off and they don't have a lot. However, she truly has a heart of goodness. It is to thank the volunteers. Since Haiyan, you have given us so much help. We have nothing else that could be used as a gift, only that shirt.
kapitbiyahan at as natatak. I'm truly moved and happy to see volunteers from so many different charity organizations here to help us. The children's thoughtfulness has inspired these teachers to work even harder in the future. The monsoon season in Cambodia runs from May to October in Phnom Penh due to the city's poor underground drainage system. Flooding is a common occurrence during the raining season. Although the monsoon season is long over, many parts of the city, however, remain inundated. To help residents, the Choi Jongwa district head turned to city for help. Soon after, volunteers arrived with emergency cash for 327 families. Although the monsoon season in Cambodia has already come to an end, however, many areas of the capital, Phnom Penh, remain flooded due to the city's poor underground drainage system. Residents have to wade through flood waters to get around their neighborhood. After conducting assessments in Choi Changhua district, city volunteers decided to distribute emergency cash to local residents. Some construction workers even stepped in to help pitch tents for the distribution. We will be more than willing to help out at other city events in the future. Locals pour inside a local temple on the day of the distribution. 327 households received Tiji's emergency cash, which will help them meet their basic needs for two months. I feel honored and am filled with gratitude to be a part of Tiji's emergency relief distribution. It is not the first time we have received Tiji's help. The volunteers have helped us on numerous occasions. We have received Tiji's help on two occasions. When my mom was still alive, she suffered from fluid retention in her arms and legs. The volunteers helped my mom get treatment and provided us with long-term assistance. In 1998, Hurricane George barreled through the city of La Romana, which lies on the Dominican Republic's east coast. In the wake of the disaster, city volunteers distributed supplies to the needy and even built a city school in the city. Those seeds of love had now begun to sprout, as was seen at a recent local volunteer training seminar, in which over half of the participants were teachers at the city school. Here's more. Hands held in prayer and a 90-degree bow. These are not empty actions, but signify a deep humility, devotion and concentration. We learned a lot in today's class. We have heard some of it before, but are now trying to bring it into our daily lives. I want to fulfill my road as a city volunteer. My favorite class is learning how city volunteers should carry themselves, daily life and in ceremonial functions. How we carry ourselves says to the world who we are and is an affirmation of the organization we belong to. It is this attitude that fills city aid distributions. As volunteers hand out uniforms and school supplies to children, they are also expressing their deep faith and love. Recently, at a local volunteer training camp, Teachers currently teaching at city schools were very much in evidence. They came to learn how to better transmit city's humanitarian message to their students. How to sign the word love. Sometimes just having fun is the best method. 
It is important to have heart and be willing to work hard. We have seen how the volunteers in South Africa, despite living in difficult conditions, are still able to do it. We have a responsibility and duty to do the same. Hurricane George brought devastation to La Romana in 1998. However, he also brought the love of Tsiji that continues to this day. Some children of new immigrants who have learned to use their mother tongue and culture to their advantage are now making a name for themselves in the business world. It goes to show the importance of learning a second language and getting to know about other countries. We now introduce you to several new sons of Taiwan. These are just a few of the exemplary new sons and daughters of Taiwan. Zheng Yaofang, the younger brother of Zheng Yaotian, began learning Indonesian from his mom at a young age, just like his brother. We just learned it naturally. She just spoke the language during our conversations, or when we text each other. So by coming into contact with the language on a regular basis, we learned it naturally. If we didn't have to take a class, that would be too much pressure. And because of their mastery of Indonesian, the Jim brothers have an advantage over those who don't have access to a second language. We live in a global village. To have proper language skills is the most basic requirement. As children of new immigrants, to be able to speak another language means to be able to communicate with more people. My mom also hopes that I might go back to Indonesia. Hello. Yao Fang is training himself to become a teacher, so he tutors at night to gain more experience. He learned how to teach from his mother. He teaches my kids that they just have to do the best they can. Acing a test is not everything. Besides teaching the math, he will also use some games to get my boys to work together. To be more culturally diverse and to be able to speak another language will definitely help a person set himself or herself apart from the crowd. After graduating from NCCU with a diplomacy degree, 25-year-old Tai Yujie started a trading company with his friends. As a new son of Taiwan, he actually did not start studying Vietnamese until college. I wasn't that familiar with Vietnamese before, but after enrolling in NCCU, I realized the school offers many language courses, so I thought I might as well try. I then discovered that what I learned is actually quite different from the average perception. Tai Yujie will become the first high school teacher for a new son of Taiwan and taught Vietnamese to high school students, making 1,000 US dollars a month. I was only a junior then. As you can imagine, it wasn't easy being a teacher and a student at the same time. But because I had the skill and the sense of purpose, so I was passionate about promoting the culture and language. Actually, learning a language and its culture is the easiest way to get to know a country. To the student, you first have to find something that they can identify with and not just tell them a lot of Vietnam laborers are working here. you got to show them the culture of the language. In today's class, Tai is getting through to his students with the help of the Vietnamese copy. He believes that society still needs to learn to accept and be tolerant of people of different backgrounds and ethnicities. 
If the government can help make that happen, then these children of new immigrants can better identify with this nation and will be more willing to share their talent to help better the country. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, city volunteers recently helped 61 year old care recipient Rao Yahua clean up his clutter home. As Zhao and his family members suffer from health issues, their house has been left unclean for years. Thankfully, with the assistance of city volunteers, their house is clean and tidy once again. A clutter home with cockroaches everywhere is where 61-year-old Rao Yahua and his family call home. As Zhao and his family members suffer from health problems, they haven't been able to attend to household chores for years. At first, Mr. Zhao wouldn't let us tidy up his home. During the first month of our home visit, we told him that we can help him get rid of some unwanted items. A team of doctor also came with us and told him that the unsanitary environment is not good for their health. He listened to the doctor and finally agreed to let us help him. Now Mr. Zhao donates his unwanted items to us and we will recycle them for him. As the family has no means to pay for cleanup, upon learning that city volunteers are helping him free of charge, Mr. Rao breaks into a smile. Of course I'm happy. I don't think it is that easy to ask people to come here to help me. How come the volunteers know so many people? I'm filled with Dharma joy because so many volunteers are here to help the Zhao family clean up. I'm truly amazed by the power of teamwork. Thanks to the volunteers' effort, the Rao family can finally live in a sanitary and healthy environment. Stay in Malaysia, the Tzajik Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter initiated a new shoot education sponsorship program in July of this year. The program aims to help ease the financial burden of impoverished students and their families through monthly financial support. In our next report, let's take a look at how Tzajik's sponsorship program has helped lift Shamitha's family out of financial despair. Waiting at the school gate for her lift, Shamita no longer has to take her two-hour bus ride home. We don't have a lot of buses passing through where we live, so I usually have to wait for a long time before a bus arrives. And to get to the bus stop, I will have to pass through a dark alley and it scares me. With the help of Tsuji, Shamita's transportation costs are now being subsidized under the new Shoots Education Sponsorship Program. Now I get home a lot faster and can arrive at school earlier too. Before, my dad would drop me off and pick me up from school. It was more convenient and I would be home a lot faster. Four years ago, Shamita's father passed away suddenly from pneumonia, leaving Shamita's mother with no choice but to take on two cleaning jobs in order to support her family. I was really depressed before and wondered how we would get through each day, but now I have learned to be at peace. She often thinks of her husband when her children are all asleep and she is alone. He was a very loving husband and father. Now she has to shoulder all these responsibilities by herself. That burden is unimaginable. Since we received financial support from Tsuji, my mom has been able to get off work earlier. She starts work at 8 in the morning and gets home by 7.30 in the evening now. A responsible big sister, Shamita steps in to cook for her younger brother and sister when their mother is not around and even helps them with their homework. Shamita plans to use a portion of the subsidies for extra tutoring as she hopes to set a good example for her younger siblings. I used to score D's in history and C's in math. This time I receive A's in both math and history. Nowadays, you don't see many children helping out around the house. With the help of this financial support, things are easier for this family now and her mother is also smiling a lot more. Because of Tsuji's timely assistance, joy and laughter has found its way back into Shamita's home. In Klang, Malaysia, Tsuji volunteers recently organized a closing ceremony for its parent-child class at the new location of the local city branch. During the ceremony, many parents say they have learned to look at their children's strength instead of their weakness. 
Meanwhile, in California, the United States, city volunteers, along with teachers and their parents, traveled to Mexico to deliver stationary and dental care kits to children at the Tijuana City School. Let's take a look. Beginning their journey from Orange County, California, city volunteers, teachers, and their parents are traveling through the border to Mexico. Hola. To celebrate Thanksgiving in a more meaningful way, Tsushas are bringing the holiday spirit to students at the Tijuana City School. First, they put on a sign language performance to break the ice. I am very glad to have this chance to visit Mexico and share with the students of the Tijuana City School. Thanksgiving is a time when families gather together, so after today's visit, they have become a part of our family. Besides presenting students with new stationary and basic dental kits, Tsuji volunteers also seize the opportunity to pass on dental care tips. I am a teacher at the Tsuji Academy. When I want to give my students pencils, they always politely reject me. Children at the Tijuana Tsuji School were extremely happy when we gave them new pencils. I think we need to be grateful because we have such a wonderful environment to live in. It was a very rare opportunity to be able to distribute stationery and basic dental kits to needy students. I can tell that all of them appreciated City's assistance by looking at their faces. My children and I should be thankful and appreciate what we have in life. Thanks to a trip to the Tijuana to do school in Mexico, this group of volunteers from the United States has discovered the joy of giving and the importance of cherishing their blessings. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Klang, Malaysia, participants of the Tsuji Parent Child class are holding a closing ceremony at the new location of the local Tsuji branch. Today's event doesn't mean our affinity stops here. It just means that this year's parent child class has successfully come to an end. After months of lessons, children and parents have learned to grow together. In fact, many parents have discovered the importance of focusing on their children's strengths. I have gained so much from attending the parent child class. I have learned to look at my child's strengths and not his weakness. After attending the Tsuji parent child class, I have learned to forgive and accept others. My relationship with friends, family members, and others is so much better compared to before. Under the guidance of Tsuji volunteers, Tsushao Xie Jingning has shown a complete 180 degree turn in her ways. I used to have a very bad temper and was not that outgoing. Now I am a completely different person and smile all the time. My friends told me that I have changed a lot. After nearly a year of discovery and learning, both parents and children have been able to rid themselves of many bad habits and can now look forward to a more harmonious future together. We go to Hubei, China at the end of the show, where Tzu volunteers visited a nursing center in Wuhan City to care for senior residents. Besides showcasing bags made from second-hand clothes, the volunteers also taught residents how to make eco-friendly detergent out of food peels. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.